The Martian was an awesome movie, and if you haven't yet seen it, turn off this video right now. But let's delve a little bit deeper into the science behind The Martian. The general look, size, and feel of Mars was very well represented. This is an entire planet after all. When Mark Watney was driving to the rescue site, it really felt like he was driving from Maine to California. One thing they got wrong was sunsets, which are actually blue on Mars. Throughout the movie, we also heard sound on Mars. Unlike space, sound actually does travel on Mars, but not very far and at a higher pitch. The atmosphere on Mars is only 1% of Earth, and this means that wind force is only 1% as strong. Suffice to say that a hurricane gale would feel like breath on the back of your neck. A more realistic disaster would have been a lightning strike, which they actually showed during the movie. There is lightning on Mars, but it seems to be a bit less frequent than on Earth. Even if there was serious wind to worry about, the abort plan was about as dumb as you can get. The last thing you want to do in the middle of a windstorm is launch a rocket. Even if they left Mark behind, the relative position of Mars and Earth would probably mean that the mothership would hang around in orbit for quite a long time, and it seems frankly negligent not to do a simple satellite pass before the mothership headed home to Earth. Earth's atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. You can drop the nitrogen content in air down quite a bit to reduce the pressure, but the lowest pressure you can possibly get down to is around 5 pounds per square inch if you want to breathe meaning the internal pressure on the shown seven-foot doorway would be equivalent to a charging rhinoceros. I don't think that duct tape plastic wrap is gonna hold. Mars is mostly dry, but we now know there's periodic liquid water. Still, this may not be especially useful if it's not near you, and it's also probably very salty. The easiest way to get water on Mars should be to melt the permafrost ice, which should be in abundance. The last thing you'd want to do is mess with the spacecraft's hydrogen in a confined space, which has a tendency to be extraordinarily toxic and dangerously explosive. That being said, the whole growing potatoes part was pretty cool. The spacesuits were great. Mechanical counterpressure suits use direct pressure on your skin to keep your insides in, unlike current suits which are basically inflated balloons. These suits would be useful on Mars, as well as in space. In the movie, they looked a little bit baggy, but we can forgive this based on mobility required for filming. The Martian did an excellent job with space flight. The launch windows and durations to Mars were sound, and the orbital mechanics were excellent. Apart from that cringeworthy moment where the astrodynamicist had to explain gravity slingshots to the head of NASA. I thought one of the best parts of the movie was when they stripped down all the excess mass and took off without a roof. With Mars's thin atmosphere, it's practically like starting out in space, so this would probably work. In fact, it's similar to what the Russians tried to do for taking off from the moon. The mothership, Hermes, seemed pretty cool, but it seemed a little too big to be practical, and do you really need five exercise machines for a crew of six? And there seemed to be no reason other than dramatized international relations to get China involved after the launch failure. The United States launches about a rocket a week. Coordinating with a new launch partner would take a lot longer than just taking the next rocket out of the pipeline. For a movie whose primary goal is audience entertainment, there's always going to be a lot of science issues to pick at around the edges. But frankly, I was very impressed at how The Martian portrayed a human mission to Mars. Let's make it happen.